Hi guys, Tom Hunt here in the kit room. Uh, and today I'm gonna to run through a subject which has been a question actually asked by someone on YouTube called Viking Leviathan. I believe they're based over in Belgium. And the question was basically asking around crankbait retrieval. He's got, I'm assuming quite clear water. He mentioned that he can see the perch sometimes. He's catching on soft plastics, but he really wants to learn more about crankbaits. He can't get any success at the moment on crankbaits and he thinks it's around his retrieval. Now, Viking Leviathan, it might be around your retrieval and I'll take you through some of those, but when it's specifically down to perch, there's a number of different tips I can give you. So hopefully this will be relevant to anyone that's out there perch fishing uh, or wanting to learn more about crankbaits. So the first thing that I'd say is um, always look at the style of crankbait and the type of uh, vibration rate that you're going to get out of your crankbait and make sure it's the right type. Now, what I mean by that is, I've got, got a good example here. I've got um, the Westin Buzz Bite in six centimeters. All right, that's in official roach. And then I've got the Westin Bully Bite here in official roach as well. And that's uh, seven centimeters, a little bit bigger. But what I wanna show you is, look how much more narrow this one is compared to this one. That instantly, what that tells me is when you've got a crankbait with much flatter sides, it's generally, not always, but generally gonna give you a very tight wiggle, a very high vibration rate. So as you're winding through, you know, cranking it down, you're gonna feel that through the rod tip. It makes a very, it's almost like fishing a chatterbait. If you've ever fished chatterbait, it feels very, very similar. That's always what I'm looking for to start with in a perch crankbait, all right? The Bully Bite is, is a very good perch crankbait as well, but for me, it's only when the perch are absolutely going crazy or the water is really, really warm and they're really, really active, all right? Reason being is because a generally a chunky body one like this has got a much wider wobble, so it displaces a lot more water. And, and imagine if um, this is coming through the water like this, that perch has to be very, very confident and very active to come down, be very aggressive, to come down and hit a bait that's moving all over the place. If you've got a tight vibration, a tight wiggle, it's coming through the water in a much straighter line. You're getting, you're getting really good vibrations out of it. There's very, very small rattles in the buzz bite as well. But as it's coming through the water, all right, it's just tails wiggling. And I feel that that's much, much better for perch to be able to come and approach the lure. Um, you know, so anywhere from neutral to kind of negative to neutral. And even when they're quite positive, you're going to catch on this. For me, you're only going to catch on the bully bite generally when they're when they're quite aggressive, when they're pretty positive, all right? So first of all, Viking Leviathan, make sure you've got a crankbait that's got a high vibration rate, you know, it's got that kind of feel to it. Second of all, selecting the right depth is really key, all right? So again, we can, we can use the difference here. I've got the six centimeter bully bite there, which has got a small uh, sort of square bill to it, and then I've got the uh, baby bite deep runner, obviously with a much bigger bill. This one I can get down to about 15-ish foot, 15, maybe 16 foot on a long cast. This one I'm probably maxing out at about six foot. So let me give you a couple of different scenarios. First of all, maybe you've got weed, maybe you've got a lot of snags, maybe you don't want to touch the bottom, all right? In places like rivers, especially because they're full of snags. I'm generally, if I know it's eight to 10 foot deep, I'm gonna select one that's six foot for a few reasons. One, I don't wanna get snagged up. Two, in rivers, the fish are much, generally much more aggressive. And they're also just, uh, they're a little bit more opportunistic. You know, the water's flowing, they're having to expend energy almost constantly. So if anything that they think is food is gonna come past, they generally have a bit of a snap at it. All right, so in that instance, I wouldn't mind fishing five or six foot deep, even in 10 foot of water, because I've got a feeling in rivers, they would come up, all right? If I was fishing a still water, for example, and it was 10 foot deep, and I didn't have any snags, probably wouldn't be selecting this one so much, 
A, I might get troubled by trout fishing a little bit higher in the water, but B, I also feel that those still water perch, maybe they get fished for a little bit more often. They're a little bit more selective. And so asking them to come three, four, five foot off the bottom, which is often where they're skulking about, that might be a bit of an ask, all right? So in those instances, I'd be looking at selecting one that's running more kind of eight, 10 foot deep, and I wouldn't mind touching the bottom a little bit. Now, one thing in particular with bottom contact, when the water's warm in the summertime and the fish are often feeding very, very early and very late, and they're feeding a lot, there's a lot of food in the water, invertebrates, fry, you know, they're often feeding at those early morning periods, five o'clock in the morning, late at night, eight, nine, ten o'clock at night, just as it's starting to get dusky. If you're fishing in the middle of the day, you're often looking for a reaction bite. So what you want to be doing is you want to make sure that you're touching and digging into the bottom. I've had it this year before where I fished crankbaits over a shoal of what I knew was perch and I couldn't get them to react. I couldn't even get them to come up just two or three foot off the bottom. The minute that I changed over and got that bait a little bit deeper and it's come along and it's touching the bottom, that bottom contact is absolutely critical sometimes, especially in the summer. Sometimes in the winter, but definitely in the summer because as it digs in, it's stirring up a little bit of silt they're very, very inquisitive. And actually they can, it's, it's no skin off their nose. They're absolutely fine with a crankbait going over the top of their head. They haven't got to come up and eat it. But if you're right in and amongst them, right in their territory, stirring it up, curiosity gets the better of them. And when it's digging into the bottom as well, you, it also tends to fire around. So if I'm fishing shallow, if I think they're only in three to six foot deep, I'm gonna look at something like this yeah, a square bill that's going to dive round and it's going to fire off left and right. It's going to hit rocks. It's going to hit little bits of maybe twigs, stir up the silt. A little bit deeper than that, six centimetre buzz bite runs 10 foot, 10 and a half foot deep. And baby bite deep runner, I'm looking at about 15 foot for that one. So sometimes bottom contact's critical, but sometimes it's not. So there's a few different, uh, few different uh, tips there. Now, coming on to retrieve. Now there's a difference with water temperature, there's a difference with water clarity, and there's a difference with kind of time of the year and the mood of the fish. So water temperature. Um, when I'm fishing in the summertime, I am fishing that bait, any of them, on a crankbait. I take 80% of the time I'm fishing almost as fast as I can wind that lure before it destabilizes and rolls. There's only a certain amount of water pressure that they will handle before they start coming up in the water or they start flipping, etc. I want to find that, that point just before that. I want to fish them almost as quick as possible, especially that buzz bite. I absolutely love burning it. Now, when I'm talking warm water, I'm talking anything over 15 degrees, all right? So take a thermometer with you or, or get to know your lakes. If you've got your fish finder, hummingbird fish finder will tell you. Make sure you've got it turned on, bottom left-hand corner read that water temperature. Anything over 15 degrees, I'm virtually all the time winding as quick as I can and looking for bottom contact, all right? That will fire those perch up and, and get I can get them to react like that. When it starts cooling down a little bit, there's a little bit in between. I'm really not a fan of crankbaits, not a fan at all. That autumn, or what I call the autumnal transition, I find it goes really funny. They can actually be really difficult. The water temperature's kind of changing a lot. Get cool nights, then you might get a warm day. It's kind of going up and down a lot. It's not until you get into your kind of late October, mid to late October, that I feel that they start to settle down. And then, you know, when you start hitting that cold water, I, I like cold water cranking. It's never gonna be as active as it is in the summer, but cold water cranking for me is deep and slow. All right, so again, I'm not asking those fish to come way off the deck. I'm often asking them, you know, I just want to be in there. I want to be slow rolling and I want to be putting lots of pauses in. Little pause, often looking for suspending or very, very low, what's called low floating. So it's only just ever so slowly going to work its way up. Crank it down, slow, 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 feel it dig into the bottom again. It's pause. Couple of quick turns maybe, just fire them up and then slow roll, 
So just think about, you know, they're going to be more lethargic. Uh, uh, they're going to be, you know, probably not feeding as hard or as aggressive as they are in the summer. So deep and slow is a really good mantra for the winter time. Then coming around the seasons, coming into the spring, uh, I'm a big fan. It's pretty much the only time that I do crankbait fishing for Xander as well as perch. Um, and what I'm, I tend to be looking a little bit more aggressive. I tend to be really mixing it up. You can have days in the spring where, you know, post spawn. So I'm normally talking about May and June for the Xander and the perch starting to wake up. The water temperature's on its way up. They've normally done their spawning. They're looking to put food, uh, you know, looking to put weight on, looking to eat quite a lot of food. And so I, I'm kind of be, I'm a bit in between. I'm not obviously as fast as I am during the summer, but I'll mix it up. You know, the spring for me is all about, you know, just trying to find out what they want. Couple of quick turns, twitch, twitch, you know, a few more quick turns, long pause. And, and the spring is they can be all over the place. They can be after a five second pause. They can be on the straight wind. It's actually really, really good fun in the spring. But the spring is the time that I mix it up the most. The summer is the time that I'm fishing as quick as possible. And I'm looking to dig into that bottom as long as I haven't got too many snags. Autumn time, I'm not such of a crankbait man. And then winter time, deep and slow for me. Um, water clarity. The clearer the water, generally as well, the slightly quicker our fish and the more natural the colours. So particularly, I've got, um, we've got this one here, which I think is called a Green Ghost. Yeah, which has got a slight translucency to it. Uh, headlight as well, a little bit of see-through in it. If the water's very, very clear, a crankbait, I mean, you tell me, have a look at that. It's not like a soft plastic. It's not like a hypotease, is it? With natural fins on it and a natural texture and a natural swimming action. There's something quite artificial about a crankbait anyway. So, you know, I always pretty much tend to fish them in the winter time like i said deep and slow it's often a little bit more colored we've had more rain more runoff gone into the lakes and the rivers that's why i'm happy to fish them a little bit slower but if i've got anything more than about two foot of clarity you want to be going sort of a bit medium to start with at the at the very minimum but do select the most natural ones all right um i do fish fire tigers Sometimes again in the summer, that late spring and summer, so from June onwards, um, evening clear water, I'm fishing it so quick, it's just, it's going straight past them and they can't help react to it. They just come up and smack it and they're kind of attacking anything in that spring and early summer. And again, later in the winter, if I've got cloudy water, I'm often looking to, to fire them up with a little flash of colour. Um, yeah just you, you need to be visible at the very least. They can hear it, they can feel it on their lateral line with the vibrations and you wanna be able to see it as well in low visibility. So there you go, there's a few tips on crankbaits. As we go around the year, definitely for perch, look for that high vibration rate so it feels like a chatterbait. In the summertime, hit that bottom, get that bottom contact, stir it up. In, um, in the winter time, deep and slow. In the spring, twitch it about. You know, you can do a lot of stuff in the spring with them. So hope that helps. Uh, a few tips on crankbaits there. And um, yeah, any other questions, guys, just drop it in the comments below and I'll, I'll see if I can make a video for you, if I can help out. So until next time, see you then.